Hello. My name is Randy Greaves. Today I'll be giving you my presentation, Past Pandemics, How a Community Survives. I am a master's student in the public history department here at Southeast Missouri State University. This is not how I intended to speak to you. I thought we would be talking in person, but due to the current pandemic and the rules from the university and the city, this is the best and safest way to communicate. I will be at the museum on Saturday to answer any questions you may have, so feel free to come by. This is not the first pandemic that Cape Girardeau has suffered through, and it probably will not be the last. There were outbreaks of typhoid fever in 1852, 53, and 1855, a whooping cough epidemic in 1875, and a long-standing cholera epidemic from 1833 to 1873, which peaked in 1849. And finally, there is the Spanish flu epidemic from 1918 to 1919. One of the first victims of the cholera epidemic was Alexander Buckner, a Missouri senator who lived here in Cape Girardeau, passed away in 1833. In 1866, an obituary listed six people who had unfortunately passed away and then continued on with, thus we might go on with a melancholy record indefinitely, but must devote our space rather to the living. These diseases were very severe and many people perished in 1905, the United States report, released a report based on its census data from 1900. In that five-year time frame, they averaged out that for every 100,000 people, 1,775 would pass away. Of those, 460 would be from disease, and 170 of those would be from epidemic diseases specifically. In today's numbers, that'd be more than 500,000 Americans dead a year. Because of the lethality of these diseases, it was very important for communities to overcome them. They were a relatively common occurrence, common enough that the people would joke about them in the newspapers, but not so common that they were never taken lightly. The mere mention of a pandemic would shut down trade ports and prevent the travel of people. One public notice posted by Cape Girardeau prevented any ship from, that had traded south of the city from coming into port unless they had proof and documentation that they had not come into contact with an infected city for at least 30 days. Signs were also posted on the houses of those who were sick with contagious diseases that warned others to stay away or risk punishment. Just as today's current pandemic has shut down schools and other businesses across the nation, so too did things like measles shut down schools in the local area. One reason for this is because a study found that 80% of people tested had the pneumonia virus, but no symptoms, and 25% had cholera. The best defense for these communities against these diseases was information. Due to the technology at the time, newspapers and public notices were the best way to disseminate information. Newspapers very often featured articles about medicines that claimed to be able to cure any disease. More often than not, these are snake oil. Sometimes rumors would make it into the papers, in which case extreme measures were taken and some papers were sued and eventually closed due to the mispublication of information. Other than the dissemination of information, the best defense for the citizens was one another. One woman celebrated on her 100th birthday was known throughout the area for giving up her home to those infected with smallpox and cholera and taking care of them at great risk to herself and her family. Notices were published in papers warning parents not to let their kids spend too much time helping out their sick neighbors, lest they too might become infected. Earlier, I had mentioned six people dying in one newspaper and many more being unlisted. Today, an average of six Americans die a year from cholera. Why is that? Well, thanks to advances in medicine and science and sanitation, we are much safer than we were yesterday. It is thanks to people like Florence Nightingale, Dr. John Snow, and Alexander Fleming, who helped develop modern nursing, penicillin, and epidemic studies that we understand as much as we do and can protect ourselves. Other advances in water treatment and sanitation have come a long way in protecting us. Our ancestors knew that typhoid and cholera were spread through the water. They didn't really understand how or know much of how to protect themselves other than boiling water every day. Today, thanks to modern water treatment, we now know that a dilution of bleach and strong UV radiation can kill these viruses and protect us all. COVID is not the first pandemic we have experienced in recent times. Swine flu, bird flu, Zika, and Ebola have all plagued us 
But unlike those, we are not, our bodies are not used to COVID. So when you put on your mask, remember you're doing it for your neighbors and they are doing it for you.